We've talked about some of the physical conditions that share symptoms with dementia and Alzheimer's and what can be done about it. We'll, we're going to get into more of that because there's lots more. But now we're going to do a series on the psychological, social, environmental issues that most of which can be remedied pretty easily. One of the things that I have found with the current elderly population is, is that there was very little to no psychological treatment throughout their lives. You know, many of my clients were born before World War II and even some born afterwards. It just wasn't done like it is today. So I want to tell you the story of Susan. Now, Susan was born in New York, but still didn't get any. When I first met her and her daughter, she was in a assisted living, and she was a fascinating woman. She had gone to college with Gloria Steinem. She had had a career in the publishing industry in New York before most women thought they could, raised a daughter. But there, she was fascinating. But every once in a while, I would walk into the room, and she'd be terrified. There'd be a speck of paint on the wall, and she'd say, there's a camera there, but don't say anything. I can't tell you because then you'll be in danger. It was painful to watch, and it was certainly painful for her to go through it. Her daughter told me, however, this was not something that happened because of old age. Throughout the daughter's life, periodically, her mother would get like this. She was probably better at hiding it when she was having a lot of things to do, go to work. She coped with it in a different way than she, now she was just sitting there in a chair all day watching TV. It was harder to cope with it, but it was a lifelong issue that had not been treated. Well, the three of us started working together, and one of the things we found was is that when Susan was a little girl, she had been sexually molested by an older cousin. Now, back in the day, you didn't talk about that stuff. You just, you know, keep them apart, hush, hush, it'll be all right. She'll forget. She's just little anyway. Of course, we don't know for sure, but it's probable that that was the beginning of this condition for her that she suffered with her whole life. But at the home, she had dementia. When her daughter would try and speak with the doctor, the daughter would get, no, no, honey, we understand. It's hard for you to accept that mom is getting old, but this stuff happens, which would make her daughter furious. She wants to come and talk to you about it, by the way, and we're going to get her. It helped when we had a better perspective of what was going on, and we started treating her differently. The reason that it's important, and you might ask, well, you know, what difference does it make? She's you know, difference. Well, it does make a difference because the treatment for PTSD and paranoia are very different. Well, some overlaps, but they're mostly different from what you do for someone who has actual dementia, perhaps something leading to Alzheimer's. And Susan wasn't getting that. Well, one example is, you know, I, I, one day I walked in and she was very different something she never recovered from. She, she was very quiet. She was having trouble getting words out. And then in the next few weeks, it got a little worse each time I went. I went to the nurse at the home, and I said, you know, I think Susan's having little strokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's, she's, got, dementia. she's got dementia. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they couldn't have done anything anyway. But they could have treated her different. Her daughter put a sign behind her chair that's told, please communicate with me. Take the time to communicate with me. You know, it, it takes me a long time to talk. Please take the time to listen. If I'm having trouble finding a word, this is how you can help me. It was, it was wonderful advice. I, I take it a picture of it and I use it for other people. But people with dementia are treated differently than people who have something else. That's just a fact. It just is. I mean, yes, there are wonderful people who, who treat everybody, you know, up to here. But, 
But so many people, when they're overworked and they've, they've only got so much time and they've got so many other people, oh, she has dementia. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important to not assume that it's dementia. Get an entire history of the client's life, whether it's you, your spouse, your parent, an entire history of the life. Is, were there signs of some mental health issue earlier? In Susan's case, it was clearly PTSD with some you know, paranoia that came along with that. If this is one of the things that you're grappling with, we have lots of help over at keepyourparentshome.com. Lots of videos from experts. We have conference calls, possibility of consultations. We're there to help you.